Hello everyone, welcome back. Let's discuss about chromosomal walking in this video. Chromosomal walking is a method of positional cloning used to find, isolate and clone a particular allele in a gene library. And this chromosomal walking was developed by Welcome Bender, Perry Spearer and David Hognes. We have an another concept called chromosomal jumping. Okay, both this chromosomal walking and chromosomal jumping are the two technical tools which are used in molecular biology for locating genes on the chromosome and physical mapping of the genomes. See here, chromosomal walking is a technique that is used to clone a target gene in a genomic library by repeated isolation and cloning of adjacent clones of the genomic library, right? Whereas the chromosomal jumping is a specialized version of chromosomal walking, which overcomes the breakpoints of chromosomal walking. Chromosomal walking can only sequence and map small lengths of chromosomes, while the chromosomal jumping enables the sequencing of large parts of chromosomes. That is the only key difference between the chromosomal walking and chromosomal jumping, okay? In chromosome walking, the ends of each overlapping fragments are used for hybridization to identify the next sequence. Okay, as you all know, many eukaryotic genes and gene clusters span enormous strands of DNA, right? Some consist of more than 1000 KB. With the use of plasmid, phage or cosmid based genomic library, such long DNA can only be obtained as a series of overlapping fragments, right? Each fragment that we isolate will be utilized as a probe to identify the next. So here in this chromosomal walking technique, we literally walk along the chromosome from a known site to unknown site. This process is often carried out to reach up to a particular gene on the chromosome and the probes that we use for stepping from one genomic clone to the next must be of a unique sequence clone. Let us now discuss about the various steps that are involved in this process of identifying a clone. Observe the picture carefully so that you will understand each step easily. From the genomic library, a clone of interest of 20 KB long identified by a probe is selected. Using the clone, prepare a probe and identify other colonies which has overlapping sequences. So one end of the clone is subclone. Now the subclone fragment of this selected clone may be hybridized with the other clones in the library. And the second clone hybridizing with the subclone of the first clone is identified due to the presence of overlapping regions. Now the end of the second is then subclone and it is used for hybridization with other clones. This helps in identifying a third clone which is having a overlapping region with the subclone end of the second clone. And now the identified third clone is also subclone and it will be hybridized with the clones in a similar manner. And this procedure is continued till the required gene is identified. At the same time, restriction map of each selected clone is prepared and compared to know the region of overlapping, which makes easy for the identification of genes. Look at this picture carefully for better understanding. So this is the eukaryotic DNA which is of around 80 KB in size, right? 80 KB is a very large sequence and if we want to map such a long chromosome, we use markers. Markers are nothing but the piece of sequence, right? From this larger DNA fragment, we take a short segment of DNA with the help of restriction enzymes. See, observe the picture. We have different set of genes, right? Capital A, small a, capital B, small b, capital C, small c, capital D, small d, capital E and small e. These colored portions are the exons which code for a particular protein, right? And if you observe, we have separated this capital A gene from the rest of the genes. And we are going to use this gene as a marker for the identification of rest of the genes. So here, gene A sequence is known. So from the known region, we move towards the unknown region. I told you earlier that in this chromosomal walking method, we literally walk along the chromosome, right? That is from the known region to the unknown region. And we are going to continue the process until we find a particular gene on the chromosome, right? So how we have isolated this gene A from the rest of the genes? 
with the help of restriction enzymes we are going to isolate this gene a and with the help of dna sequencing methods we will come to know the exact position of bases once we come to know the exact position of bases we are going to design a primer in order to amplify the next region using pcr i have already made a video on pcr please go through that video for better understanding so now what happens this primer will go and bind with capital a gene because they both are complementary to each other after the binding of the primer process will be initiated right what happens in a pcr method we are going to provide dna template dntps dna polymerase enzyme and a primer right this primer will go and base pairs with the dna sequence and it will initiate the process where the dna polymerase is going to add one nucleotide after the other at the 3 prime end in this way we are going to amplify the next region with the help of pcr to know whether the gene got amplified or not with the pcr we do cloning for the pcr result and we are going to name it as lambda clone 1 again we use this small a gene sequence to screen further observe carefully what is the gene present next to capital a small a right so after the step of amplification again we provide it to the library and again we cut with the help of restriction enzymes so now we are going to isolate the next gene that is small a gene with the help of restriction enzymes once we isolate this gene again we are going to sequence the gene once we come to know the sequence information about this smaller a gene again we are going to design a primer in order to amplify the rest of the portion again we are going to clone it using vectors similarly we are going to sequence the next gene that is capital b in this way we are going to continue the process until we reach a particular gene on the chromosome so by using this method it is possible to sequence the gene at the same time we will come to know the position of the gene which is nothing but physical mapping of the genome this is all about chromosomal walking soon i'll come up with my next video thank you so much